This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome everyone to our webinar. Uh, this is just a brief disclaimer that we will be recording this webinar so that we can post this on our website for our future reference and for those who are unable to, to join the webinar today. Um, welcome. We are very excited to have this opportunity to share some information with you all and our families, our network. Um, this webinar is on understanding the new Medicaid and managed care services rolling out for families and youth with behavioral health needs. I'm Courtney Lavelle, Program Director with Families Together in New York State, and I'm excited to bring you these details and hopefully this information will be beneficial for you and your family and maybe individuals you're working with that you might know. So to begin, we just have a quick little disclaimer. This webinar is designed to be utilized to educate families and youth about Medicaid redesign in a way that is family and youth friendly. Any discussions pertaining to this training are not necessarily representative of the view of MH. I would ask that anybody who's on here, if we could just make sure that we're muted so that there is no background feedback. We'll take a moment right now to make sure that you're, you're muted. All right, so moving right along. First, the agenda for today's webinar, we're gonna be going over some basics about just understanding Medicaid, um, Medicaid managed care redesign, health home, care coordination, of course, the new ch children and families treatment support services, how to access these new services. Um, we're gonna give you some service flow examples and then provide you with a bunch of resources. The goal is to keep this webinar to under an hour. Um, if you have to hop off at any point, that's Perfectly fine. Again, we're going to be recording this and posting this to our, our website so you'll have access to it in the future. A quick glossary of terms that you might hear in this webinar or just moving forward. Um, this is a really helpful tool. We'll go over some of these specific uh, examples um, of what they mean throughout the, the webinar. But quickly, you might see HH, which means health home, a CCO or slash HH is care coordination organization in a health home, um, CS children and youth evaluation services, HCBS health and community based services, which we will talk about a, a bit more. Um, of course, CFTSS, which stands for the children and family treatment and support services, OLP, other licensed practitioner, CPST, community psychiatric support and treatment, PSR. Like social rehabilitation support, FPSS, Family Peer Support Services, Youth Peer Support and Training, Crisis Intervention, but FCA, Single Case Agreements. I just listen. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, you can't get on first of all. So if you want to listen to what I've been Again, I just ask that if anybody is on, if you could please take the time now to mute your so there is no background feedback. We're going to be talking about MMCP, managed, Medicaid Managed Care Providers, FPA, Family Peer Advocates, CERPA S, CRPA S, that's a Certified Recovery Peer Advocate Family, a CERPA Y, Certified Recovery Peer Advocate Youth, and the EPDST is the Early Periodic Diagnostic Screen Testing. So I know that's a lot. This is hopefully going to be a resource to you that you can draw from in the future. All right, so let's move right into understanding Medicaid managed care. Hmm. Hands-free mute. I think if you press that, <laughs> they can't hear you. <laughs> you can hear some feedback in the 
the background. So if you can mute, that would be great. I'm trying to mute you all from, from my side, but some of you are not able to be muted. All right, so what is Medicaid managed care? New York State is making changes to children's Medicaid services to provide equal access to services regardless of which services young people and their family are trying to access. They offer services in the community and expand these services to be for young people up to age 21. Medicaid managed care is a redesign of Medicaid services to better support youth and families within their community. These services are provided through a Medicaid managed care plan, which is part of the new design of the health insurance company. So one might ask how I would get Medicaid managed care plan. And if, you're, if you have questions specifically, we've provided a phone number that you can reach out to to call New York Managed Medicaid Choice at 1-800-505-5678. Um, when it's time to pick a plan, families will get a letter with further instructions on how to do so. And you might hear the term health home. We talked about it in the glossary of terms, um, but, but what is it? A health home is not a place. It is a group of healthcare and service providers working together to ensure people get the care and services they need to stay healthy. When someone is enrolled in a health home, they are given a care coordinator who works with them to set up a care plan, appointments, and get the services needed. If you think of it as um, uh, the health home is the umbrella for all of these services, we've provided on this webinar the direct link so that you can find health homes within your community. And if you hang on till the end of the webinar, I've got these links pulled up. I can show you what it looks like. So we've talked about health homes a little bit. What about care coordination? A care coordinator, also referred to sometimes as a care manager, works with the family and youth as well as the service providers to coordinate care. There's a really great two-minute video here um, that we, we were part of developing, and it's just a really great visual about care coordination. And it's on Vimeo. We have the link pulled up here. We're going to be sharing it on our Facebook page today, so anybody who's watching this webinar you can follow back up on our Facebook page and get to see it. Um, I highly recommend you look at it just to really break down into simple language what care coordination is and why it might be of value to you and your family. Anybody who has called in and is not using their computer, please make sure that you're muted on your computer and your phone. All right, another term you might hear is HCBS. HCBS are home and community-based services, which provide opportunities for families on Medicaid with children with intensive or complex needs to receive services in their own home or community, rather than institutions or other isolated settings. Anyone enrolled in HCBS services will need a care coordinator, as we just discussed on the, the previous slide. So here are some highlights about care at the HCBS. The real goal is to help keep children and youth with their complex health and mental health needs in their home and community. All right, so now that we've kind of done the uh, umbrella of the system, let's focus in on these new services. We're going to be talking specifically about how the new children and family treatment and support services um, are going to be available and how they're going to affect our families today. These new services are specifically for youth under 21 experiencing behavioral health needs. These services can be provided at home or in the community, outside of an office setting. They support youth and families and help them make informed decisions about their care to improve their health, well-being, and quality of life. They meet the individual needs of children, youth, and their families or caregivers by identifying mental health and, and or substance use needs early, preventing the need for emergency room visits, hospital stays, and out-of-home placements. The, the real idea behind these services is to try to intervene sooner, provide services and care and support within the natural home environment and setting so that it doesn't need to escalate to being services outside of home. And, All right, so how to access these services. The next couple slides are, are really important slides. 
So anyone can make a, a referral for these services. If you're a parent and you think your child needs more support, you, you can refer your own family to potentially get a recommendation for these new services. Again, anybody can really make that referral to services, but a recommendation is what's needed to receive the services. So after the referral, we need the recommendation. The recommendation is the key to access. To get a recommendation, a licensed practitioner needs to identify and document that these services um, and their components are needed. They have to determine if they're medically necessary, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. So this recommendation is what stands between a family and accessing these services. So there are specific people who can make these recommendations for these new services. If you see here, we've just explained a little bit about medical necessity, which is what needs to be determined in order for there to be a recommendation for these services. In order for family needs to access them, there needs to be deemed medical necessity, which there's some jargon on the slide about what that medical, medical necessity means. There's also a link here. Um, each new state plan service will have specific guidelines. So the medical necessity for each new service might be slightly different depending on the service you're trying to seek. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate things for families and their youth. You can click on this link and find out specifically what that medical necessity is going to be. Um, we're going to focus more so on getting families um, and their youth to get this recommendation to an OLP, somebody who's qualified to make the recommendation and find out if medical necessity is met and then into the service. So this is what an example of medical necessity that you could bring with you to a, an appointment, a doctor's appointment, a meeting with your licensed practitioner who we'll talk about momentarily. Um, it looks something like this, but really the, the point of the, this form is to help the licensed practitioner to find out if they meet medical necessity for specific services. Think of it as a script. You could go to a doctor's office, you could go to a list of OLPs and other licensed um, practitioners to find out if your child, your family member, might be eligible to receive certain types of support that are now covered under these new services. And we'll talk a bit more about the, the list of those licensed providers and what these new services actually are. But here is a link on the slide that'll bring you to an example that was provided to you by the state. Um, if you wanted to print this out and bring it with you to an appointment, you could, but it also, uh, the proof of medical necessity could be written down on a doctor's script pad. It could be really simple. We just need to make sure that the right license provider is checking to see if the criteria is met for medical necessity for the specific service, and then you can use that to receive the service. So these new services, let's talk a bit more about them. Um, they include other licensed professionals, which are the licensed professionals who can make the, the medical necessity and make the recommendation. We're going to talk about that. It's community psychiatric support and treatment, psychosocial re rehabilitation support, family peer support services, youth peer support and training, and crisis intervention. So these are the services we're going to be going over today. All right. Start with OLPs, other licensed practitioner. So there's a link here to um, a spa manual that has all this information broken down for each new service, including the medical necessity. On this slide of the webinar, we've provided you the exact page number within that specific manual and the link to that manual. Um, again, if you hang out till the end of the webinar, I'll, I'll pull up the links so you can see what they look like. Um, but if you want to look into more detail or if you have questions, this is really going to hold all of your answers as to what these services are. So they'll be broken out for each new service. So OLPs are like the primary care, really, if you think of it, of that, of the new um, children and family treatment support services. They provide evaluations, recommendations, psychotherapy, and treatment planning and crisis intervention. OLPs are licensed behavioral health practitioners who provide 
license evaluation and assessment to establish a diagnosis where needed and identify services, practices medically necessary to meet the needs of the family and youth. Treatment planning, which is the detailed scope of practices to be provided, the expected outcomes and frequency or duration of the treatment for each provider. They perform psychotherapy, therapeutic communication, and an interaction to help manage and alleviate symptoms that's affecting the young person's life. And they also perform crisis intervention activities, phone or in-person support to address crisis situations that require immediate attention and well as follow-up activities. So that's the overarching tone of what the OLPs provide. And on the next slide, you'll see a list here of who qualifies as an other licensed practitioner. I did receive a question here. Yes, you will be able to have access to the slide deck. Not only will we post this whole webinar on our, face, on our Families Together New York State website, we're going to have a dedicated page with this um, slide deck as well as other handout materials that you'll be able to use that will hopefully be supports and resources for you. So the list of other licensed practitioners include um, licensed psychoanalysts, licensed clinical social workers, licensed marriage and family therapists, licensed, licensed mental health counselors, licensed master social workers when under the supervision of the licensed clinical social worker or a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And if you notice over in red, uh, we have licensed practitioner of the healing art. So we're going to also talk about that. Sometimes OLPs are often referred to as LPHAs. Licensed Practitioners of the Healing Arts. Um, licensed Practitioners of the Healing Arts have a, a broader list. They can also serve to make recommendations and provide services. So some of these include um, your nurse practitioner, a registered nurse professional, so potentially um, the nurse within a, a school district. Uh, you have your physician, which could be your, your family doctor. A lot of this, this list is a bit broader. So the OLPs and the licensed practitioner of healing arts are, are who you really need to get to in order to get that recommendation made for these services because they can determine medical necessity. All right, so that's our first service. Our second service is the Community Psychiatric Support and Treatment. So this is located on page 21 within the January SPA manual. Again, the link is provided to you if you'd like to go and find out more information specifically about that service. The service is designed to provide community-based services to young people and their families who may have difficulty engaging in formal office settings but can benefit from home and community-based rehabilitative services. This can also be provided in co coordination with clinical treatment services to address it. It can really be as broad as supporting daily living, personal recovery and resilience, um, family and interpersonal relationships in school, and community integration. These services more specifically include intensive intervention, individual, family, and relationship-based counseling, supportive counseling, solution-focused intervention, emotional and behavioral management, um, problem behavior analysis. It includes crisis uh, avoidance, activities geared towards assisting the youth, young adults, with effectively responding to or avoiding identified triggers that would risk the youth remaining at home. Uh, intermediate term crisis management. That includes activities that assist families following a crisis episode and just and are described in the crisis management plan. They're intended for children in need of longer term crisis management services. So it's still crisis, but understanding that this might persist for a bit longer. Rehabil rehabilitative psychoeducation uh, includes educating youth and family members, caregivers about treatment options or associated environmental stressors, which interfere with the youth's daily living, financial management, housing, academic and or employment progress, personal recovery or resilience, family or interpersonal relationships, and community integration. So it's, it can be pretty broad. Strength-based service planning includes assisting the youth and family members or their caregivers with identifying strengths, their needs, resources, natural support, 
as well as developing goals and objectives to utilize personal strength, resources, and natural support. Rehabilitative support includes restoration and recovery activities or supports that aid in improving life safety skills, basic safety practices, physical and behavioral health care, recognizes when, when to contact a physician, self-administration of medication for physical, mental, and or substance use disorder conditions, um, and also understanding the side effects of those medications. All right. Our next service is psychosocial rehabilitative support. So this is located on page 26 is in that manual. Again, a lot, a lot of detail for you there. The link is provided directly to that manual for you on here. So psychosocial rehabilitation supports or PSR services are hands-on task-oriented activities for young people to build independent community living skills within their natural settings at home. Um, activities are really hands-on task task oriented, they're focused on rehabilitative needs of the youth. And they can also be provided in collaboration with treatment interventions, as long as it's by a licensed provider, one of those OLPs or LPHAs. So more specifically, these services include social and personal living skills, and that's rehabilitative interventions, individualized, collaborative, hands-on training to build developmentally appropriate skills. And the goal is to restore, rehabilitate, and support. Daily living skills uh, is to support the individual with the development and implementation of daily living skills and daily routines necessary to remain in the home, school, work, or community, whatever's appropriate. And it increases personal autonomy skills such as learning to manage stress, unexpected daily events and disruptions, behavioral health and physical health systems. And finally, community integration uh, includes implementing learned skills the youth can use to remain in a natural community location and achieve developmentally appropriate functioning in the following areas. Um, social skills, health skills, interpersonal skills, responding to or avoiding those identified triggers, supporting personal interests and hobbies, identifying resources and connecting to natural supports and resources within the community. All right, family, well, oh, going too fast. <laughs> family peer support services. So this one is just about to be expanding um, as of July. And you can find out more specific information on page 32 within that manual. We've provided that link right here for you to see it. Family Peer Support Services, or FPSS, are an array of formal and informal activities and supports provided to families caring for or raising a young person who is experiencing social, emotional, medical, developmental, substance use, or and or behavioral challenges by a peer with lived experience. So that's key here that the family peer support services will always be offered by another family member with lived experience um, managing navigating these kind of systems and experiences. So what does this entail? <laughs> it entails a lot. So Family Peer Support Services, FPSS, include engaging, bridging, and transition support. And that means supporting a productive parent-provider partnership, assisting families to express their strength. To express their strengths, needs, and goals. Addressing barriers that prevent participation in services and supporting families during transition. Placements in crisis between services, etc. It also includes self-advocacy, self-efficacy, and empowerment 
So empowering families to partner in all planning and decision making, to make informed decisions, to express their needs, understand the process and prepare for meetings, sharing information and resources about services and providing opportunities for the families to connect to and support one another. Additionally, parent skill development, which includes helping to learn and practice strategies to support their child's positive behavior and health, assist them with implementing strategies recommended by clinicians, provide individual or group skill development, and provide emotional support. Lastly, community connections and natural support is to help the family connect to natural supports, identify new supportive relationships, and get involved with leisure activities, extracurriculars, and work collaboratively with the school to promote family engagement, um, really to help find out what resources and supports are available at home and around the person and their family and their youth. All right, so youth peer support and training. Now this one is not expanding until January of 2020. Uh, more information can be found on page 40 within the spawn manual and the link is located right here on the screen for you. Um, similarly to family peer support services, youth peer support and training or YPST are an array of formal and informal services and supports provided by a peer with lived experience to young people to expand the skills and strategies needed to move forward in meeting their personal, individualized life goals, develop self-advocacy skills, and support the transition into adulthood for that young person. So what these services include, uh, skill building. Uh, some of these are very similar to the family peer support services. Skill building, develop skills for wellness, resiliency, recovery, as well as independently navigating the service system, setting goals, and community living. Coaching, which is to promote wellness through modeling and provide mutual support, hope, reassurance, and advocacy that includes sharing one's own personal recovery resilience story. <clears throat> it seemed appropriate and beneficial to the young person. So if it's if it makes sense, if it's going to help in decreasing feelings of isolation and a uh, youth peer support provider can share examples and pieces of their own experience that might help create um, that feeling of connecting, connection and relationship. Engagement, bridging and transition support, uh, again, similar to the family peer support services. Act as a peer partner in transitioning to different levels of care and into adulthood. Help the young person understand what, what to expect and how and why they should be active in developing their own personal plan and natural supports around them within their natural environment, their home, their community. Self-advocacy and self-efficacy and empowerment is developing, linking, and facilitating the use of formal and informal services, serving as an advocate, mentor, or facilitator to resolve issues, and helping young people develop self-advocacy skills and make independent choices. Lastly, community connections and natural supports, connecting young people to community resources and services, accompanying them when needed for the purpose of mentoring and support, and developing a network of peer support. This also includes facilitating or arranging these peer resiliency and recovery support groups, which is an incredibly important part for young people trying to navigate these systems and, and different challenges. And one of the last new services, um, which is also expanding in January of 2020, uh, is going to be located on page 14 of the SPA manual, Crisis Intervention. So crisis intervention are mobile services and planning designed to address and prevent crisis. This face-to-face -face intervention is provided by the clinician uh, or the other licensed practitioner, the OLP or the LPHA that we discussed before. These, of all of the new services, I think pretty understandably, 
crisis intervention services do not need to be written into a treatment plan ahead of time. Um, and as crisis comes up, uh, a clinician or an OLP or an LPHA can determine that the, this crisis intervention support layer is needed and implemented at any point during treatment. So what does that look like? Um, the crisis intervention services include assessment of risk, status, or need for further evaluation or other behavioral health services. It includes crisis planning. The, the crisis planning minimally, minimally addresses immediate safety and risk concerns, prevention of future crisis, signing of appropriate consent for releases for follow-up referrals to services in collaboration with existing providers, um, care coordination, including consultation with a physician or other licensed practitioners of the healing arts, the LPHAs, to assist with the child's specific crisis and planning for future uh, services. Contact with collaterals focused on the child's needs, so other natural support. Follow-up with the child and family caregiver within 24 hours of initial contact or response, including informing existing support or providers of the developed crisis plan documentation of, of any follow-up services. It also includes crisis resolution and debriefing or counseling with the child and family or caregivers and treatment, plan, treatment providers. It also includes peer support, so assisting in the resolution of issues through instilling confidence and support. So really through crisis intervention, you can as this rolls out, if there's a crisis that happens, for example, if a, a youth who's struggling with substance use disorder um, experiences an overdose at this point and there is a crisis situation that happens and that individual might be hospitalized, uh, and we can then bring in peer support for that young person um, under this new way as well with crisis intervention. To be a support and champion and hopefully provide some hope one example of the many different examples of how to access these services. So now I would like to kind of walk through um, a case example of how somebody who isn't connected to any kind of support um, or service provider might be able to access services because of these new services that are rolling out. So we'll use the example that a parent or a caregiver receives a, a letter home from school stating that their child is experiencing some behavioral issues that they are concerned might be impacting the child's ability to really thrive in school. And you can fill that in however you want, but the, the incident that's triggering all this is that there is a letter received home from school um, that there are some concerns from the school about the child. So the parent or caregiver um, has a, a flow of services. So the first question to ask, is there already a family care advocate involved in this person's life? Um, if there is, then that's the best case scenario. We can just contact your family care advocate. If we're assuming that this case uh, is a family that is not yet connected to any kind of services, we're not really involved in any services, there might not be a family care advocate yet. So then one possible scenario to be linked up to an OLP or a licensed practitioner for healing arts is to set up an appointment with a, a family physician, your family doctor, and a pediatrician. So you could, after receiving this letter, if you're at a loss of what to do and you don't have a family peer advocate, um, you could reach out to your family physician, make an appointment, and have the doctor check for that medical necessity that we discussed before. Again, it, it can be as simple as the doctor being able to look at that medical criteria and then writing a script saying this young person does qualify for more support through some of these new services. And you can take that or you can utilize the example that the state has provided, which is in that link that was earlier in the webinar. I'll show you at the end exactly what that looks like. You can bring that example with you to the doctor's appointment have the doctor check for medical necessity, and if the youth, the other child, meets medical necessity for any one of the, the new services, the doctor can make a recommendation. And that recommendation 
you know, if that recommendation is not made, then we would suggest if you're having um, experiencing some challenges, you can still always contact Families Together in New York State to be connected to a regional parent advisor for more support. But if the recommendation is made, you can go directly to um, a regional parent support, a regional parent advisor to be connected to support and shown where there might be some service providers within your community. So if you're a family member, a loved one, a parent, a caretaker who is watching this webinar now, who is listening to this and has a concern that has come up here is one potential flow of services that you could take to find out if your youth, your child meets medical necessity for any of the new services, and then you could get a recommendation. There are a bunch of other steps, but we don't need to overcomplicate it. Once you get that recommendation, your best bet is to get connected to a regional parent advisor to find out what the next steps are. There are resources that we'll be sharing with you of how you can look up providers right within your community. If you would like to just take that recommendation directly to a provider, you can always do that. Um, you can always do that. And, or if you're not feeling as comfortable reaching out to families together, being connected with a, a parent advisor, they're very well informed on this whole process of how to meet medical necessity, find an LLP or an LPHA, and get a recommendation and where you can bring that recommendation for services. So another example uh, of flow of service that we can look at is for a youth or a young person themselves. So at the beginning of this webinar, we discussed that really anybody can make a referral for services. So any person, a parent, a family member, a loved one, a teacher, a, a, um, a guidance counselor, or the youth themselves can identify that there's an issue. So in this example, we're going to say that a young person is having a really hard time at school managing their depressive symptoms. Uh, they're already engaged with a, a therapist. They've been going to, to get some care on a regular basis, but it's it's just starting to get to be too much and overwhelming and they're identifying for themselves that they need some more support. So the first question is, is there a youth peer advocate involved? If there is, that's a great first step is to reach out to your peer advocate and they can assist you and walk you through the process of how you might be able to engage in some new services. If there isn't a youth peer advocate already involved, you could set up an appointment with your therapist. If that therapist is one of the- Nope. If that therapist is one of the OLPs or the licensed practitioners of the healing arts, so that could be uh, a licensed clinical social worker or a psychologist, um, one of those many things on the list we provided earlier on, then they could potentially check for medical necessity. And you can do this the same way as we discussed with the doctor, hopefully the therapist is aware of how to discover the medical necessity, but you can provide that example. Um, you can go right on to the, the link we've, we've provided. You can print out that example and you can bring it with you. And the therapist can see if you meet medical necessity for any one of the new services. So the new service could be the youth peer support and training. Maybe the young person is struggling and not feeling connected in school and really needs a youth peer advocate, um, a youth peer in their life to find some hope, some resiliency, and feel connected again. So the therapist can make that recommendation if medical necessity is met. Um, if the medical necessity is not met, then there is no recommendation made, and then we would still suggest that you contact families together to be connected to a regional youth partner and find out what services and supports might still be available. Um, but if the recommendation is made, we can get you connected right to this list here of Youth Powers, Youth Regional Partners, um, and they can tell you what services are available within your community, where you can take that recommendation specifically. Once you have that information, you bring that recommendation to a service provider, hopefully it's right within your community, and you can get connected to that support. So that support is, for example, youth peer support. Um, again, um, we've got the links on here for all of these places where to contact. Uh, just here shortly, I will pull up all of these links so you can see what they look like and where to find them. Um, this PowerPoint slide deck will be available to you soon from our website. So a lot of the information that was used to compile this 
for families. Um, it's located in the following slide. For more details regarding the services, you should go right to the, the uh, HCBS manual to locate designated providers. Um, we've got the links to find those providers right in your community. I'll show you what that looks like here shortly. OMH has already drafted a lot of brochures and materials on these new services that are really great. We here at Families Together in New York State are also drafting more materials to show families specifically how, what these services are and where you can go to access their to access them. Um, specifically, a lot of these slide references, we have the Children's um, Health and Behavioral Health System Transformation in New York State slide deck, which is a great, a great resource. Um, the Children's Family Treatment and Support Services in-depth training and review. Timeline slide deck was a great resource by CTAC, and also the updated Children and Families Treatment Support Manual. So this is the SPA manual here, this that last bullet on the slide that was referenced numerous times throughout this presentation. Um, some additional resources here are on this, this last slide right here. If you have any questions about any of this, you can contact uh, Managed Care, New York Medicaid Choice, New York State Children and Youth Evaluation Services, you can also always contact us at Families Together in New York State and we can try to get you connected to the right resources within your community. Um, as promised, I'm gonna pull up a few of these resources that we talked about. So hopefully you can all still see this. All right, great. So this is the resource that's available, um, that link that was provided to you in the webinar to find a health home. So how this works, you follow the link, it brings you to the Department of Health page, and you get this wonderful map. We'll click on Albany, since we're hosting this in Albany, and it provides you a list of the health homes that you can contact right within Albany County. So say you do have a recommendation and you're looking for support, here's one option of how you can find that support. This is a great map of how to find a health home. Another resource that we talked about, this is the link of the medical necessity form example that's been provided to us. So you can follow that link, it'll bring you right to this page, and you can print this whole thing out and bring it right with you to that doctor's appointment or to a therapist appointment, what have you. This is what the SPA manual looks like. This is, and I, I dated it to January 9th, 2019, because as it gets updated, there might be other versions of it out there. All of the resources um, and the page numbers that we referenced are from this specific January 9th, 2019 SPA manual. And again, it talks about all the specifics for each of these services. It's heavy on the jargon though, um, but it even explains the medical necessity for each new service. Another resource we have for you um, from the Office of Mental Health is if you need to find a service provider for you in your family, in your community, there is a link here to search for a mental health program. And you can enter in your county, the region, the city, town where you're looking, you can make it as specific or broad as you would like in the pool of all the providers in your area. Another resource we discussed during the webinar we're the regional parent advisors. So in those service flows, we really try to get you connected to uh, regional parent advisors within your, within your area, within your community. So our website link was provided in the service flow, and this is where it'll take you to. It's another map. When you click on the map, you say this Hudson River region, and then our parent our regional parent advisor information pops up as, long as, as well as contact information, phone numbers, tells you what areas they work in for all of the areas. So you can find your regional parent advisor that way. Additionally, in the second service flow example, we talked about the, the youth example. So their link to the youth power page where they have all of their staff, you scroll down just a little bit and you can get to, you start seeing the, the regional youth partners. So we have regional youth partners all across the state that can be great resources for youth who are looking for services and support or might not know how to necessarily get connected to um, 
an OLP or an LPHA, where they do have that recommendation and don't know where to receive the services, we have a, a ton of supports available that way. So that is all that we have for the webinar today. Um, thank you everyone who has taken the time to attend. Again, this has been recorded. We're gonna post this up onto our Families Together in New York State website. We're gonna create another page specifically for this, as well as other materials that we're gonna be providing to you. The, you'll be able to view this again in its entirety or download it and, and use it within your community or to share with your family and friends as well as some printed handout materials that can help make this a little easier to understand. If anyone has any questions or support, please feel free to reach out to us here at Families Together. My specific email is clavelle at ftnyf.org, um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you all have. Thank you so much. <laughs>